Hello there. My name is Mark, and today I'll be talking to you about the benefits of lab-grown diamonds. So, before I get started, uh, here's some information on lab-grown diamonds. So, uh, a lab-synthesized diamond may have been first created in the 1890s by this scientist whose name I cannot pronounce, but is written right here, Ferdinand Frederick Henry Morsal, or something like that. But this is unconfirmed whether or not he created a diamond or something that just looked like a diamond. But the first confirmed creation of a lab synthesized diamond was in 1953 by a Swedish company uh, with the acronym ASEA, uh, with the full company name written right here. Uh, and there are four methods of creation for lab-grown diamonds. HPHT, high pressure, high temperature. Uh, this is one of the, the cheaper methods of making lab-grown diamonds. And it's the way that many diamonds are made for industrial applications, such as uh, saws and grinders and that sort of thing. And then there's CVD, chemical vapor deposition, which produces, or which is better at making gemstone type diamonds. You can make diamonds with explosives, where you put some explosive powder inside a, uh, like a, essentially a box. And then when it explodes, it creates a high pressure, high temperature area where diamonds can be formed. Then there's also ultrasound cavitation, uh, which I couldn't find much information about, uh, but it seems like in the future this may be an alternative to HPHT. Uh, it's one of the cheaper methods of making lab-grown diamonds, but it is not a very effective one. And then now some applications of lab-grown diamonds. So like I said earlier, there's industrial applications like machining and cutting tools. So saws, drill bits, angle grinders, etc. Uh, they all use these diamonds because diamonds have a 10 out of 10 on the Mo hardness scale. So they're very, they're very hard and can more easily cut through materials. Uh, other applications of lab-grown diamonds include gemstones and jewelry. It's a cheaper alternative to mine diamonds. Lasers, and then there are also future uses, like in technology. Because these lab-grown diamonds are cheaper to produce than mine diamonds, uh, as the technology of creating lab-grown diamonds gets better, there are more potential uses such, in, such as in technology where they can replace our current semiconductors due to their thermal conductivity and other properties that they have. And lastly, I want to talk about some negatives of mined diamonds. So first of all, there's the ecological effects like deforestation and the rerouting of rivers. And both of these affect an area's wildlife and negatively affect an area's ecosystems. And then, I think more importantly, many mine diamonds, or many diamond mines, abuse the human rights of their workers, especially in Africa and India, where uh, they exploit children uh, to mine their diamonds. And in Africa, the diamonds are used to fund their wars. Workers are paid very, very little in these African and Indian mines, uh, around 15 to $20 a week. And they're exposed to many, many diseases and face many health conditions because uh, they live and work in really terrible conditions. Uh, and that's, that's about all I have to say for today. I didn't mention it earlier, but lab-grown diamonds are very, very, they're pretty much identical 
they have the same properties as mined diamonds. Uh, and that's all for today. Thank you for listening.